Hi, Dad. I'm gonna come home for a few days. I love you. Hi. We're waiting here forever. You're always early. Are you starting already? Come on, let's go home. <laughs> there are still a lot of unanswered questions, but it appears Detective Thomas Craven was the intended target. This is someone armed and dangerous. What do you think I am? I do. You are out of your depth and far from your jurisdiction. Everybody talks about power, but they don't really understand. Well, you had better decide whether you're hanging on the cross or banging in the nail. Um, it, it actually, it, it wasn't that tough. You know, Bob, Bob saw the character going one way and Martin and myself and Mel saw it going another. And it was a pure um, kind of disagreement on where Jedberg should be in the film. And sometimes you've just got to kind of, you know, Go your separate ways, it happens, you know. He just had it in his head that he wanted to play a certain way. And again, when you've got a director who directed the miniseries, he had it so tight in his head of how he wanted these characters to be. And uh, it just wasn't for Bob. So we decided, you know, to part ways. And uh, Ray Winston came up and really, really helped us out and did, did a great job. Great job. Welcome to hell. What does it feel like? Well, you know, hey, we're all in the grip of an economic crisis. I think that's a global worry. And, um, you know, and it's certainly affected every aspect of every business, I think, everywhere, including the film business. And, uh, and that's under a huge metamorphosis at the moment. Um, a, a lot of changes have to be made to accommodate, what, the lack of funding? And uh, you have to be able to keep up quality. Uh, for less, because it won't take that same kind of... It's not the old days anymore. Everything's changing. And technology's changing. Like crazy. I mean, I won't use film again. I'll just go digital. And why not? You know, it's as good. I think it's as good. Purists will say, no, we must have film. You know, it's like, nah. I've already <laughs> shot on digital, and it looks fine, you know. And um, so things are changing. And, you know, guys like Cameron, they're changing. A, they're making a whole new paradigm now. Everyone in Hollywood is now, every movie is now, let's do 3D, let's do 3D. We're all copying that. Yeah, you're all so original. Yes. Mr. Craven, we have things to talk about. Make your name and what you're doing here. Like who shot your daughter. I want to know what my daughter did. Uh, it doesn't seem like sacrifice, actually, when it comes to kids. Because, you know, you'll do a lot of things that you would never do for anyone else. But you'll even take abuse from them, it doesn't bother you because they're your kids, you know. But um, uh, I guess it's not really, it should, you should never even view it like sacrifice, I think. It's just a given, isn't it? I mean, my parents gave me everything of themselves, whatever they had, you know. And uh, in, in many ways, I'm not as good a parent as my parents were, you know. But there's no limit to, you know, what you would give to your children. I mean, my son asked me for ten thousand dollars the other day, and I said no. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. I think protection and, and guidance, and try and teach them what's right. And uh, you know, kids growing up in Hollywood is a dangerous thing. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> they get cameras. You know. Right, right. Um, but you know, you, you learn as you go along. You've never been a parent before. So you just kind of, you know, you're doing it in a blind kind of thing. Emma Charlotte Craven was flagged as a possible threat to the United States of America. My daughter was not the type. You know, everybody talks about power, but they don't really... Perhaps it looks more physically challenging than it was. I mean, it, it wasn't... It, it didn't overtax me. Um, there, you know, you have aches and pains because you bump into stuff and 25-year-olds throw you up against walls and stuff, so it hurts, okay? So you get a chiropractor in advance. Um, but... Um, Challenging physically, not really. I mostly just kind of walked around and said stuff. Except the, the most physical challenge was staying in a two shot. While Martin seemed to be able, he cast people that were all over six and a half feet tall, <laughs> trying to stay in a two shot. So it was like <laughs> the whole time, you know. I, 
I think it was anyway. built into the thing. When, you know, after that wrestling match I had with this kid who was, <laughs> he was taking it easy on me too, okay? I'm sort of breathing heavy and being tired. I wasn't faking that stuff, okay? So it's, um, you know, hey, it's, you don't bounce back like you used to, so it is more taxing than it was. But, uh, hey, I can still, I'll bet I can still crank out about 17 or 18 chin ups. My daughter was in a creep. I'm the guy with nothing to lose. Fasten your seatbelt. And I think that, that that primal rage lives in all of us. Who hasn't been awake at 3 a.m. planning a murder? Right, really. Everybody, right? So, <laughs> of course. you know, do you do it? No. But do you plan it? Yeah. <laughs> you lose a little sleep before you realize you're just murdering yourself. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a part of, uh, it's a part of the human experience. And all the great writers wrote about it. I mean, Sh uh, Shakespeare wrote about it, you know, with Hamlet, you know, which is arguably the, the most classical, most high-brow revenge tragedy ever. And, um, and, and uh, you know, Turner and Webster and all those Jacobean guys in the 17th century and Dumas with the Count of Monte Cristo. And, you know, it's all revenge. And to sort of uh, get that rage going and understand those feelings, to actually stay super American. I, I think the strongest... Um, element of the story, the core is the emotional part, you know, the, the, the father-daughter uh, thing, or the failed parent thing, or the survivor guilt aspect of um, a father who ultimately could not protect his own daughter. He failed, and, um, and he's guilty. And he, he finds things like a, a gun and a, Geiger counter and radiated hair, and he realizes he didn't know it at all. So he's a, he's feeling pretty bad all over, all around, and he uh, tries to make that up, you know, posthumously through the film by not breaking down, but by going back to what he knows, just boring routine, and holding it together that way till he can give his life to it because that's all he's got. <laughs>